and welcome to another episode of Forza Horizon 5 Let's Go Live with Playground Games. Today we are talking about the weather, obviously, but by no means is this going to be small talk. Oh, absolutely not. Forza Horizon 5 has the largest, most diverse open world setting of any Forza game to date, and the team went to extra great lengths to recreate the dynamic skies and weather of Mexico in authentic detail. I think the, the one thing that sets us apart really is um, that we capture the real sky. We shoot many days, like for, for um, Horizon 5, we shot like 400 hours of skies. And um, then we select from them to get the days that look the best, so that have an amazing sunrise, amazing sunset, have the amazing weather variety that, that we want in our games. As you can see here, the, the rig is uh, com composed of three uh, medium format cameras, and each one of these shoots an 8K image, uh, pointing at a, a third of the sky each, and then we take that back and stitch it together. And then we have a, a 12, up to a 12K image that we can use for our sky domes. How does that sky compare to Forza Horizon 4? Did you have to rework the system between the two games, or did it just like take it up to 11? It's, it's basically taking it up to 11. So the, yeah. the rig is the third iteration of it. Um, so we, we're getting better and better at doing these sky shoots. So in uh, Horizon 4, the system would then pick one preset from our skies mm -hmm. um, to, to give them their selection. And we had about 300 of them. This time we have over 2,000. So there's, there's quite a lot more variety. And a free roam, of course, you'll experience that too. Weather is regional in Forza Horizon 5. So if you're in the, in the living desert, um, you could get just sprinkling of, of, of rain. And then if you go down the jungle, it could be a torrential down, downpour. So we have all these uh, different weather um, uh, behaviors in the different um, biomes, which really re reflects and enhances the experience that you have in those biomes. Mm -hmm. um, along with that is we have kind of two new weather effects, which are seasonal, um, which is our towering dust storms um, and our tropical storms. And it's, it's the one thing that's new about that as well is that it doesn't just happen around you you actually can see it from a distance and approach it, um, which is something that we've never done in a Horizon game. In our uh, winter season, which is um, in the Mexico is our dry season, um, if you want to experience, get a snow experience, you could drive up to the volcano and drive around the snow. If you don't want that snow winter wintery experience, then you could drive to the coast and you know have a you know um, have a very uh, vacationy uh, type experience. So um, it is very different per region, um, as well as seasonal. So we also change those weather patterns and weather behaviors uh, uh, based on the different seasons. They are permanent in the skies too, so obviously um, during the stormy season you see many more of those storms really rolling in, massive cloud formations. So like that, that is literally why we go through all this trouble because the lighting is just so different depending on where in the world you are at which time. Hello Forza fans and welcome to another episode of Forza Horizon 5 Let's Go Live with Playground Games. Since the game's announcement last month, by the way, we've asked you what you want to know about Forza Horizon 5 and we have now dedicated some time to answer some of those questions during these live streams. Today we are specifically dedicating an entire episode to one of the most requested topics in the Forza community, but before we get onto it, let's do some quick introductions. Beside me once again is Playground Games Creative Director Mike Brown and and a new face, lead audio designer, Fraser Strachan. How are you, Mike? Let's start there. It is so exciting to be here. I think you touched on there. This is a topic that the community have really been looking forward to, mm -hmm. but I think that, that excitement is matched by our excitement to come and show what we've been working on. Big vibes today, big mm. vibes. Fraser, over to you. First time on the show. Uh, can we have maybe a quick elevator pitch of who you are? Sure, yeah. Um, so I'm Fraser Strachan. I'm the lead audio designer uh, on Forza Horizon 5, and I lead the whole audio team on all the different various pizza bits and bobs. Um, but everything you hear in the game uh, essentially goes through me. Now that's a bit of a statement. All right, I am eager to find out more <laughs> about exactly what that means. But first, let's take a quick look at the schedule for today. To start things off, Mike and Fraser will walk us through how they captured car audio for Forza Horizon 5 and then integrated those sounds into the game. They'll then debut new audible upgrades in the game and we'll go through the audio improvements on the Xbox Series X and S consoles. And as always, if you have any questions as we go along, especially around today's audio theme, put those in chat and we'll answer a few at the end of the stream. So Mike, we're gonna go over to you first before we deep dive into the nerdery. And I specifically wanna know what's so exciting about the car sounds we're gonna be talking about today in Forza Horizon 5. 
Yeah, so in Forza Horizon 5, we have the largest car list we've ever launched with, hundreds of cars, and I am just super excited about the fact that each one of them sounds unique, it sounds different, it sounds authentic. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. yeah, I was gonna say, you did mention mere seconds ago that every sound has to go through you, so l let's unpack that, I think. What does that mean? Sure, yeah, I mean, so I actually work really closely with Mike, um, sort of figuring out what Mike's creative vision is for the game and mm -hmm. trying to translate that into uh, an amazing soundscape for our games. And I think both of us were super excited to choose somewhere like Mexico, which has such a strong audible palette to it. Like, as soon as you say Mexico, you know what the soundscape sounds like, you know what the ambience is, the music, mm -hmm. the, the car culture, it just comes with all of that bundled into it. And we were so excited to, to get into that. But Mike and I worked really closely on things like, um, as I mentioned, the music, so we work on the soundtrack together. Yeah, that's right. So uh, myself and Fraser, along with Dave Orton, uh, a regular on these streams, if you're a regular viewer, uh, we're responsible for collating that soundtrack and mm -hmm. bringing all of the artists on board and getting, the, getting those soundtracks together. Um, we're not actually going to talk in any more depth uh, about the soundtrack on this show. We'll Love pick that tease. up in a later show. <laughs> so this is all about car audio today. And yeah. that's a perfect segue because I want to know the most important question is, how do you make the sound for so many cars in a car game? Well, I mean... You can't have this many cars without having loads of good car recordings. Absolutely. You need to have really good source. Mm -hmm. And one thing I'm really excited um, to share with everyone is that we've actually been out and we've recorded and added over 320 brand new car recordings to our existing library, which mm -hmm. means that we've got an absolutely phenomenal amount of source to make the cars sound as best as they possibly can. So the cars in Horizon 5 are going to sound legit. And to prove that, we actually have something we can watch now. We're going to unpack a little bit about how you recorded these because it looks incredible. So we're going to be showing this in the background. Unfortunately, we're going to be yapping over the top of it. So if you do want to watch a clean version, don't worry, there will be another one uploaded at a later time. But Fraser, what is it we're looking at here then? Uh, so we're just looking a little bit at some of the cars that we've been out and recording um, over the last few years. Um, it really did take the last... Um, what, two, three years to, to, years really, to, do yeah, this. to really um, uh, sort of build everything from the ground up. Uh -huh. we, we needed that extra time to really look at how we revolutionize how we were doing the cars because it just takes a long time it, with the old process that we have. So we've got brand new processes in place. And as I mentioned, it really starts with getting really great car recording source. Um, so with this many cars, we need to get out and source a lot of cars, mm -hmm. like finding, finding people. You mean you lot don't have these just in your garage? I wish. Just ready to I really record. do wish. <laughs> I mean, do you know what? They did actually record a Mustang. And then I found out the day after that they'd been at a racetrack with a Mustang. And I was like, guys, it's <laughs> like. It's <laughs> Maybe it says something about the sound of your car. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, oh yeah, no, it's, it's true. We'll get your car out and record it as well. Thank you. Um, we, it, it does take a long time to source all the different people with all these different vehicles and figure out, get them to send us videos of, of like what they sound like because you know every car, um, there's hundreds of variations of mm -hmm. them and they do vary in how they actually sound as well. So we want them to sound crisp and, and full of like all the frequencies that we want to yeah. try and record. Um, it's pretty incredible, right? The XJ220 is probably one of the rarest cars in the world and it, it's just like calling somebody up and asking if we can borrow their car for a bit. You just whack some microphones on it like it was no big deal. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this is one of my favorite um, car recordings that we've actually got in the game. It just, it's such a, a rare engine and it just, it just translates so well into the game. Um, and you sort of see that we're recording them out on a, uh, an airstrip. Mm -hmm. We need that for various reasons so that it's flat and you can record the car in a single gear going all the way up to the red Consistent, line. And right? all, yeah, exactly, yeah. all the way back down again. Um, and you need that length as well, because if you're recording a hypercar, you maybe don't need it to be as long because it can, it can get up to top speed fairly quickly. Whereas mm -hmm. if you're recording a, an old, truck. An, a truck like this or an old <laughs> banger or a vintage uh, car, then you kind of need a stretch of land that goes all the way up to Scotland, um, to be honest. <laughs> um, so it, you do need the full length, and sometimes you even worry that you're going to go off the end. Um, but uh, fortunately, it's never happened. Um, this was an interesting truck to record, actually, because you can see the engine is exposed at the back, mm -hmm. and uh, we have to do a lot of work to, to wrap muffling around the microphones to make sure that um, all of that wind that is traveling around the front of the vehicle and coming around the back, yeah. doesn't you don't hear that in the microphones because it, it can sound really it kind of distorted once you get up to top speed. Some yeah. of these cars can go really fast, including this truck. Um, 
So we do we do take each car out and each one is its own specific beast. Like it comes with its own challenges. Mm -hmm. This one it was, it was different compared to like we've got um, you know these these lances as well, which is cool. Um, and we minimum probably go out with around about eight microphones uh, for each car but sometimes we'll attach more if they've got really good transmission sounds or you know if it's a if it's a, a hybrid car we might make sure we're recording the electric winds on them as well mm -hmm. um, so it's a bit like a drum kit you attach like multiple different microphones and then when, once you get back to the studio you can have a listen and see which ones sound the best at the different positions on the microphone yeah. and mix them all together um, and this was really fun car to get out on the track, really raspy, really kind of like quite violent actually. Yeah, I can't <laughs> believe you guys got a strat ass. That is, I like one that looks to be museum quality as well. <laughs> it's like in absolute perfect condition. Well, this you, whole thing just looks like a, a car nerd's dream. Was there any that was quite, I mean, you mentioned the Jag getting out there and filming that was pretty amazing. Were there any other highlights from this? This long session you were doing? Absolutely. Um, I mean, I think I think my favourite is the Morgan three wheeler purely because it's such a unique car. Like uh -huh. it's basically, you know, it's a V two, um, almost like a motorbike engine. You can only fit one person in it. So um, normally, when there's a two, a two, like a passenger and a driver, we mm -hmm. can get in the car and sit there and tell them exactly how to drive the car. Whereas a vehicle like that, you kind of have to just shove the recorder in and tell them what to do and. <laughs> hope that it sounds good when it comes back <laughs> um, but yeah there's there's some really cool cars and a lot of these a lot of these people that bring their cars along um, they'll be Forza fans themselves so they'll turn Love up and they'll that. be excited to, yeah. to hear them in the game so um, I'm sure I'm sure they'll all be glad to see these well, if you need to do any pickups with a Corsa do let me know right. I can be available at a moment's notice noted noted <laughs> Mustang Corsa there you go <laughs> so <laughs> well, there is the Morgan Three Lee there as well. This was brilliant. I mean, you could you could hear this the same volume down the end of the runway <laughs> that it was right next to you. So it was just an absolute beast. It was so raspy. It's incredible. It sounds like a World War Two plane, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's cool. Um, so we got this, and then uh, you'll see coming up in a minute. We also went out and recorded uh, multiple different types of Supras. So um, okay. the Supra was an interesting one that we added to Forza Horizon 4. There was a lot of conversation around the sound of it. Um, is that does it sound stock? Like is that an upgraded one? And and honestly, we we kind of never really had that concept of mm -hmm. of the two in a Horizon game before. Um, so one thing we were really keen to do was try and get multiple Supras out and record. So this is the stock one that you can see here. Still sounded great, mm -hmm. so absolutely terrific. Um, really cool sort of dump valve sounds on it. Um, but then we actually got another um, Supra along to the same session, okay. which just battled it out. <laughs> and um, you'll see coming up in a second, it, they both were revving next to one another and it really, paints the picture of what it sounds like to upgrade your car from, from mm. stock up to something something else. The thing I loved about the, the upgraded oh, Supra, is. there it is. There they are, head to head, let's go. <laughs> well, listen to that. That, that would blow your head off. Absolutely spitting incredible. fire there. Yeah, yeah, we actually lost a few microphones to these. <laughs> I can um, imagine, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've got a microphone cemetery somewhere in PG. <laughs> Um, this one sounded incredible. When it when it passed by, you just hear the the kind of yeah, sounds as it, as it goes that past. That noise exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, and like all that, all those sounds that we record in these cars across the um, 320 plus, we've managed to um, curate them and uh, and really make a, a massive library of, of source out of all that stuff as well. Mm. So I suppose the, the the you know the big question in the room is how does that turn into a game then? How do you take all the sounds you pick up from this track? these lovely folks who have these wonderful cars, and then how do we actually hear them when we play them? Well, that's something that um, Mike and the dev team kind of, <coughs> they're quite um, jealous when they see us bring these cars back to the studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the, so we're giving you this presentation now. Fraser does this maybe 10 times throughout <laughs> development, where he's like, hey, everybody, here's another video of us out on the track with a load of cars. And then... <laughs> My and job's uh, great. <laughs> yeah. Well, then we get the job of going and like, playing them in game and seeing what they feel like, this and, then, and then providing the feedback, which, usually, which is usually along the lines of, sounds amazing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <coughs> I guess to get a little bit more technical, um, one of the things I'm really excited about is previous Horizon games, we were developing our granular um, hybrid looping technology, which is um, something we've been working on for a long time, but it's taken a while to develop to the point where we could, we could really ramp it up to, to using it okay. across all these cars. So 
in previous games, we were maybe using it on, I'd say, about 10 to 15% of the cars, um, such as in Horizon 4. Um, we're using it on 100% of the cars uh, now in Horizon 5, which is great. They all sound fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, for anyone who's not really sure exactly what granular synthesis is, um, the old method was essentially uh, a looping method, which would take a car and it would, it, we'd put it in a garage uh, on a dyno and get it to play back at like say 1000 RPM, 2000 RPM, 3000 RPM. Mm -hmm. And it was a computer that was doing that. So it was a fairly simulated environment. We chop the loops out from those and then play them back. So the, there's a few things. Th th they can sound a little bit like they're in a garage uh, and not really out uh, on track. Uh, and they can also kind of sound a little bit wrong when you don't get the engine rotations matching up correctly. Mm -hmm. um, so with our new granular synthesis uh, techniques, we actually take the recordings that we get out on track, um, having driven up to the red line, back down again, we chop each of the individual engine rotations up into a tiny little sample, and we end up with thousands of little audio files wow. that we can play back in the game. And the benefit of granular is that it runs at 90 frames per second, which it obviously clocks faster than our game actually runs. Okay. Um, and the cool thing about that is a lot of people will say the cars feel more responsive. They just, it just feels like when you rev the controller, you're doing that in, in the game and it feels far more like responsive, like you're in control of it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what you're seeing there when it's 90 frames per second. Um, it's just far more reactive and I'm, I'm super excited for everyone to get in and have a listen. Well, talking of have a listen, uh, we do have an exclusive look and listen right now at some of these cars in action. So let's take a peek. And once again, uh, we'll, we will be pausing to listen to some of these beauties, but we will be putting a clean version up later. So let's have a listen to this one first. This one's a Supra tearing it through the living desert. It is, yep. Yeah, that's the black Supra, I think, or w one of the other ones that, that you saw on that car. It's one of my absolute favourite cars when I was a kid. It's amazing. This car handles really nicely. It's really kind of bouncy along all the, the different terrains. Oh, here we go. Bit of deja vu here. <laughs> and you, you really hear that rasp coming through that, that we yeah. heard out on track. We won't need to encourage you to do this, but people will already go and grab all these clips and lay them over top of it and then realize that, mm. that the Stratos we had on track really does sound exactly like the one. That's game. what I'm going to be doing after the stream. It's going to be going back and seeing if I can get all the different sounds and be like, hmm, yes, you did do it. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> this one, I think, translated really well into the game. This one's lovely. Quite a lot of people around the studio have this car, yeah. so uh -huh. there's a lot of people who know exactly how it should resonate sound. Resonate with this one, yeah. yeah. I think it's one of the things that, I mean, following last episode in which we were talking about the sky, and the sky being an actual image of the Mexican sky, and now knowing that these cars are the actual recorded, it's, that it's your, what I'm trying to say is art is quite literally imitating life <laughs> yeah. in a game that is ridiculously fun to play, right? We're trying to be as, as accurate and um, sort of, I guess, trying to portray real life as, as much as we possibly mm -hmm. can whilst making it fun for all the players to listen to. I love the sound of this GT. Uh, the uh, Hurricane cover car from FH2. The vibes coming off that right now with the fireworks and the background. Oh goodness! When is it November 9th? <laughs> <laughs> is it now, please? This one was interesting because um, someone on the dev team actually has this in uh, in the car park, and every day he would come around and say, "Come and have a listen. Like, <laughs> you, you, like make sure make sure it sounds exactly like this. Do some extra um, credit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These Ferraris sound really mean. And we've got some really good Ferrari recordings in the game now. And of course, the Dodge Viper, which I think a lot of people will be happy to see this feature here. Just a little snippet. 
Something interesting to point out here is, um, I guess when, when you see this video after the, the stream, something to listen out for is all the different tyre sounds and all the different vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, we've now got different skid sounds based on the vehicle and the tyre size, so that wow. if you're in a massive truck, you'll hear that, um, as well as you know skid uh, tyres and drift tyres and stuff. like that and wait for us to finish talking about. <laughs> this one's I love this area of the map because it it features into something we'll probably talk about a little bit later on mm -hmm. where you can hear everything slap off of the canyon walls. Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't ask this. Um, it's something I know very fondly from the Forza community is that they all love slapping on turbos and superchargers their cars. And so I, I sort of have to ask on behalf of them if those have improved as well. They have. So I think... Wonderful. I <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mentioned that we... Because we've been out and recorded so many cars, and especially something like the, the different Supras, they all come with different um, blow-off valve sounds. We've got this massive library of sounds now. Mm -hmm. um, as part of our improvements, we've actually created a brand new modular system, which uh, essentially um, it sort of intelligently takes all of our database information that we have. So it figures out, um, is it a V8? Is it a muscle car? Is it modern or is it vintage? and basically pulls from a library of different sources so that it attaches them onto the cars for you, okay. whereas before it was quite a static system. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I'm really excited about is that all of that stuff I was telling you about granular synthesis running at 90 frames per second, we've actually now got all the turbo winds, the supercharger winds, and all the transmission winds running through that same system. So all of that is super reactive, um, and it, it, they sound really good like up next to the, the car engines. Mm. Um, and one of the cool things using this new modular system is that it actually allows us, um, when you're upgrading your car, to hear the different sounds of the turbos and superchargers as they're applied. Oh, so folks will be able to experience that in real time when they come to upgrade their own vehicles. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Wow. So, yeah, okay. so you'll now, as you're upgrading your car, you'll be able to hear those upgrades taking effect. So when you change the exhaust, the intake, the camshaft, you'll be able to rev the engine and hear the difference that, that makes to the sound mm. of your car. I think we actually have a video um, showcasing some of that in action. Any second. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> now it's live. Yeah, so here you can see that um, we're in the uh, player house um, in the, the normal upgrade flow. Uh, and you can go to your intake and hear as you apply the different um, stock, street, race and sport performance modes, um, you can hear that actually change the sound of your car. And don't worry, I've talked all over the top of it, but we will make this video <laughs> available after <laughs> afterwards. Yeah, a cool new feature as well, you can now rev your engine from inside the garage. So as you're trying out oh, these I different like upgrades, that. you can rev the engine and see exactly what it sounds like. I'm also a big fan of the graph. Just going to say it, <laughs> love a graph. It sort, of, it sort of adds to how nerdy and wonderful this all feels. So you can do it with your exhaust as well, um, depending on the upgrade paths per uh -huh. car. Uh, you'll be able to hear your uh, exhaust note change. And it's important to point out that this doesn't actually just, it doesn't change the volume of the car because then it would unsettle the mix. What it does is it actually changes the character of the car. So it, mm. it, it sounds completely different and it gives you that feeling of actually taking off a complete exhaust and replacing it with a, okay. a, an entirely different manufactured part. And then one thing, this is one of my favorite parts of the, um, we've been working with the, the physics team really, really closely uh, to introduce uh, drive t train flex back into the, the game, which is really cool. And that sort of gives you that wobble on the car so that as you're taking off in lower gears, because yeah. it goes, it's uh, reacting uh, to it, yeah. And then you, as you're in higher gears, it's kind of <laughs> wobble, wobble, um, which is really cool. <laughs> Um, but Any more sounds of what it does? Uh, on, honestly, Charlie, Just he does this wait. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's like that guy from Police Academy. In, un, unsufferable. Um, <laughs> the, yeah, and the, the other thing you would have seen there on the, the camshaft upgrades is that a lot of people picked up on the limiter behaviors in some of the, the cars. Mm -hmm. So as the, the car is bouncing off the limiter, um, if it's at a lower one, it might all the cars in Forza Horizon 4 used to have a, a set limiter behavior. So they'd go like, wow, 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 where they're up the top. Mm -hmm. Whereas as you upgrade it, you'll hear it kind of go, wah, 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 and it's up the top. Uh, I knew do you, you were do this in me. meetings? All the time. Is this how you time. communicate what you want your yeah, team to do? Yeah, I want do. a little bit more <laughs> rather than um, It works. I completely understand what you mean, so it's effective. <laughs> um, so yeah, as you upgrade your car um, on your intake, your exhaust, um, you will have seen there that we had 
as you go through all the different turbo layers, the supercharger layers, the centrifugal um, superchargers as well, uh, you'll hear all the, those changing in real time as you rev, as well as when you apply the like stock street race and sport modes for each of the different turbos, mm -hmm. it'll go from being kind of like a to more of a I don't think we could do a show without these now. I want you to know that. There you go. I'm just going to be wheeled just on for the sound on. effects. <laughs> Here's the sound of the week. <laughs> just, just as an aside while we're looking at this, um, I think it's cool to note that if you're wondering why the car looks so, so realistic, why it sits in the scene so nicely, it's because you've got, you've got ray tracing active as well. So actually, I, d I mean, does ray tracing affect anything audio-wise as well as visual while we're here? It does, yes. Um, so we have taken ray tracing and we're using it um, throughout the world. So actually we're sending out ray traces uh, to detect walls, buildings and ceilings as well. Like echolocation? Like echolocation, yeah. Can you do a I'm dolphin not, sound effect? I can't do a dolphin sound effect. You know I, I can't do it. I, I bet you can. I've just heard all these sound I bet you can. I think it's your turn. I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yes, so um, I think that's used ray tracing as well, but... Um, yeah, <laughs> you didn't want to do a dolphin. No, no, I was like, <laughs> yeah, that's anyway, not making ray sense. tracing. Go on, um, go on, Fred. Yeah, so ray tracing. We're using ray tracing to detect walls, ceilings, uh, buildings, uh -huh. which means that um, you'll hear your car bouncing off of all the buildings mm -hmm. uh, around you, and that'll change with the environment. It's really cool. As soon as we turned it on, it just like it grounded you in reality. Mm. It made the world feel really alive. Like so, when you're driving through Guanajuato, for instance, it basically. You know, you can hear it slapping off off of all the buildings, um, and I mentioned there as well that we're detecting ceilings, so mm -hmm. things like tunnels, for instance. If you're listening with spatial audio, something like Dolby Atmos with your headphones on, you'll actually be able to hear your car bouncing off of uh, the roofs wow. as well, which is really cool. What I love is that, like, when you're in the city and it's like a really hard surface, you get that kind of crisp echo. Whereas, like, when you're in, when you're in the rainforest in the jungle, it's that it's still bouncing back off of all the trees and foliage, but it's much more muffled and much more like much more organic feel to it, but still like totally. really effective. Every every material in the game has been set up with a different absorption coefficient, which mm -hmm. is um, kind of an acoustic term, which essentially says if it's concrete, then it'll bounce off more sound than it yeah. would if it's um, foliage or something like that, which actually absorbs the sound. So it's really dynamic to the world around you. Um, something we were chatting about before as well is um, occlusion that we're using ray tracing for as well, mm -hmm. which means that um, as you play something like a multiplayer mode, we're actually detecting the, the where every single car is in relation to your car, okay. and we're muffling the sound of the cars uh, to make sure that if a car is behind a building, for instance, you know not to head straight towards the car, mm -hmm. but to maybe like head up the alleyway and try and cut them off as as they come Sneaky. around the corner. I, I use hiding to win, so that's not fair. That that's been. <laughs> yeah, I should add that we're talking about eliminator here and not just the regular multiplayer Fine. race, because <laughs> 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 otherwise that those behaviours that Fraser is describing would be no, yeah, unusual. Really. They're just behind you. <laughs> <laughs> what about other players? Do they get to experience these changes that you? made as well within the cars? Yeah, absolutely. So um, everything that I've talked about with um, granular engines, uh, the modular system that we've developed, every other car that you race against will benefit from those as well. And it makes races just sound I bet that better. launch moment is, and you hear all the engines kick up, and you could just like name them all. It's it's so effective, honestly. Like Fraser told me about it before I heard it, and I've got to be honest, I was like, uh huh, yeah, I'm sure that'd be cool. <laughs> and then, <laughs> but then the the actual experience of it is, it's so visceral and interesting, yeah. and um, you do genuinely hear like, oh, it's a V10, that's a V8. You can just hear every car going past you, or or as you're going past them. Yeah, it's really cool. And as you as as your players drive past you, you'll hear all those upgrades that they've applied. So if if your friend has applied a supercharger um, and you kind of want to hear that, you'll be able to hear that next to you as well. I think something to point out as well is that um, all of the AI cars and, the, and your friends around you, the sound of their car will be the exact same sound that your car has. So if two Lamborghinis pull up next to one another, they'll both sound the same, they're sharing the same engine, which I know is something that um, players had sort of mentioned in Horizon 4 before as a, as a bit of a, an issue, which um, I'm glad to say we fixed that now. Lovely. And now I do have to ask a rather personal question, and that is um, a little birdie does tell me that everything does indeed sound better on the Xbox Series consoles. Can you confirm how and why? Um, yeah, that's right. It's one of those things where as much as we talk about the Xbox Series consoles, mm -hmm. you tend to 
talk about how great everything looks, the amount mm -hmm. of detail we've been able to work, yeah. how beautiful the world is. But the consoles actually unlock quite a lot of extra audio capabilities as well. Um, Absol yeah, Absol talk? Absolutely. Um, so with the new Xbox Series consoles, we've actually unlocked uh, a new compression format, which allows for much higher fidelity um, audio. It's almost nice. almost imperceivably uh, like it's uncompressed, which is great. It's kind of you know it's what audio files uh, talk about all the time, um, and. It was a joy for me because a lot of people, uh, I know in the clips that we've released already, I sort of mentioned the fact that it sounds a bit cleaner, sounds a bit more refined. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're hearing is actually the higher fidelity compression format, which um, just makes everything sound so much better. And the good thing is that it's, it's not just your car that benefits from that, it's absolutely everything in the game. So the ambience, the music, um, the dialogue, and the cars, everything sounds better on Xbox Series consoles. Um, I must say as well that if you're playing on an Xbox Series console mm -hmm. and you're playing against all your friends who all have these granular engines, um, thanks to the modular system, you'll actually be able to hear more cars around you as well as more of those upgrades and turbo parts. So yeah, as they're yeah. driving past you, you hear all the flutters and stuff, which is great. Just adds so much character to the game. I love it. And talking of character, it's my favorite part of the stream, in which we go to you lot for some questions. Um, so you've been asking questions throughout the stream. I'm actually going to ask the first one, because I'm the most important person in the room. And I want to make sure that we talk about convertibles in essentially every single episode, because it's been a consistent theme. So I want to know, we already know that the lids go up and down, but do they change the sound of the car too? They do. They do. Hey, yes. there <laughs> we go. I thought as much. It's, it's one of those things that you, um, you maybe don't think about, but mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of a subtle shift. Um, previously, we kind of only had the concept of, was it, was it a hard top car or was it soft top? And it was, it was binary, it was either one or the other, yeah. which made it really hard for us to, to implement something like convertibles. Um, because we've completely revolutionized the way that we're doing car audio for this game, we've actually been able to implement um, the cockpit filtering, the cockpit reverb systems a little bit different so that actually, um, if you're in a car with the, the top up, it'll sound all muffled. And as it comes down, you'll actually hear all the ambience and oh. the wildlife really creep in. It, you know, if it's raining, you'll hear that as well. And then that's another cool point that, you know, Dolby Atmos, you'll hear that above you as it's going down. A little bit of a geeky point, but I, I quite no, like it. brilliant. Full nerd. We absolutely love it. <laughs> um, the next question comes from Forza Horizon World, and they ask, what is your favorite car sound that you've recorded? And I give this to you both to answer. Oh, uh, there's so many to choose from. I'll go first, and I'll say the Stratos. I think the Stratos is just a really cool, iconic rally car that I, I personally really, really love that car. Mm -hmm. And I think it just sounds absolutely fantastic. I think, um, so I, I featured the, the BRZ because I just think it's such a cool, like, rumbly boxer end. It's just, it's just got a really nice kind of low end to it. And um, I definitely picked my favorite engine to show on the stream, yeah. Very good. Okay, next question comes from Subterfuge Dog, who says, "How do you keep the exhaust out of the muffling?" Uh, so that's that's a good question. We we have to place them a certain distance away from the from the exhaust. Uh -huh. um, exhaust can get really hot; like mm -hmm. you you just wouldn't be able to touch one. Um, so we we keep them a certain distance away, uh, and that sort of that sort of stops the the exhaust being muffled by like being surrounded by all these microphones. Um, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a um, test and and see what sounds good. So you kind of place it on your drive up and down. If it does sound muffled, then we'll probably just move the microphone and, and run it up and down again. Mm -hmm. So it's it's we kind of just play it by ear. Okay. The next question comes from Jerp. Sorry if I've said that wrong. Um, it's a really interesting question because you've actually mentioned both these methods, and they're curious to know why you've chosen to record in this way and not using the previously mentioned mm. dyno method. That's a great question. <laughs> uh, no, I like the way you I say that and then turn like I told yes. Prep, I told. I told. I told. I, I was thinking about. I'm asking, I'm asking this one myself. Okay. Well, alive, there you go. So, so thank, thank you, Jerp. Um, um, aside <laughs> from the fact that it's really fun to get cars out on track and, and race them up and down, um, there is a really important point, which is uh, if you put a car on uh, a dyno, then essentially you can basically only record uh, the car when it's accelerating. There's, there's no way to get that offload sound. Mm -hmm. it basically, it has no load applied to the engine. So as soon as you let off the, th the throttle, the car's not going anywhere. So it basically just, it just lets off and the, the deceleration just disappears. So previously, a, a lot of the, the looping cars would actually play the same acceleration 
loops all the way up and all the way back down again. Okay. Whereas with uh, the method that we choose, you can go out in the car in the environment that bas basically best simulates what the game actually looks like. Mm -hmm. um, you can take it up to the red line and then you can, you can actually decelerate from, you can be doing 120 miles per hour and you can just get all the pops and bangs, all the natural like whine, and decelerations do sound like really different to accelerations on cars. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, the short answer is to get all of that lovely character and detail, the pops and bangs, and, and all the little sweeteners that we want to record. But also, you wanted a really fun day out. Is Lo that's the unof days unofficial out, answer? Lots yeah. of days out. Exactly. <laughs> 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 the next question comes from DNK, who asks: So, because the sounds have improved a lot, will the first-person car sounds be improved? As well this I think is a great question by the way that is a great question and probably something I forgot to touch upon <laughs> um, yes we um, so we have as part of the car recording process we've actually been recording cockpit impulse responses mm -hmm. which is a, a new method of, of doing reverb in the game uh, essentially we basically record a sign sweep from um, from every frequency that the the human ear can hear so it kind of goes like Whoo! Up through, the, up through the, the range. Good. I know you like sound effects. Mm -hmm. um, and what that does is it captures how the cockpit of the car reacts at each of the different frequencies all the way up the frequency range. Okay. And that basically means that when you feed the exhaust and engine into that reverb, then it makes the first person perspective sound amazing. Um, it also benefits all the things like the tires that you can hear skidding on the ground, uh, just like, <laughs> like the that. one outside. Um, <laughs> all the tires screeching on the ground, all the kick up, all the, the water, all the rain, all the weather, mm -hmm. as that plays through the cockpit, it just sounds like you're actually sitting in the vehicle that we've actually recorded. Authenticity. Yeah, I would just say as well, I, I tend to play cockpit. That is my preferred way to play. And I am, I've been very keen as, as we've been going through development to just all of the cars we have in the game that I have driven in real life mm -hmm. to just go and like get a feel for them and drive them. <laughs> in. I, I, I can vouch for the fact that they do really do sound authentically. Trying like to catch me car. out. Well, <laughs> I, I would provide the feedback if it wasn't, if it wasn't quite accurate. <laughs> Lovely. The next question comes from Gab Riser who asks, the huge bridge that was seen in the E3 gameplay is that part of the huge highway that you talked about in previous streams, Great Catch? Um, it's actually not, no. The, bri the bridge is on uh, a separate road that runs through and above uh, the jungle region. Um, so yeah, not part of the highway. Mm, good spot though, good spot. Okay, next question comes from Cragger Long Claw, who asks, will the Eliminator start covering the entire map? Um, you so the circle is slightly larger. You can still pick any of the start locations, but then if that circle is in an unfortunate position for you, you may have to move quite quickly to get inside it. You have it. to book so it, yeah. yeah. Okay, but, but, but an unlimited game can, can use any part of the map, yes. Okay, lovely. And then the last question. Oh, no, my apologies. There's another one there. So first of all, we'll do Box Fort, who asks, can we expect to see familiar Forza Horizon characters to return in Forza Horizon 5? Um, Yes, yes, Lovely. we can. We have a, a bunch of returning characters, plenty of new faces as well. But no, we have um, some some friendly faces. Alex and Jay are back. Mm -hmm. Scott Tyler, of course, is here. Yeah, uh, yep. as is Amy Simpson on Pulse. Yeah, uh, even Mike Steele is back again. <laughs> we, we, won't, we won't spoil why he is here for it. What well, I will say is, anyone watching this who knows, you're going to roll your eyes that I've said this. Uh, many people who I am close friends with have, by the way, just mentioned I should do the voice of Anna, and I think it's a stupid idea because I sound ridiculous. But I am just going to put it out there. Can you give me a do you want to audition right now? Okay. Well, well, what, what do you want me to say? What's the line that you've got Anna to record? Um, t turn around when it is safe to do so. Turn around when it's safe to do so. That was quite bossy. That, that, yeah, that was quite, that's yeah. quite strict. I know, but <laughs> I think it'd be really effective, right? And just think about it. Maybe we'll pick it up in another stream. Right, cool. The actual last question, however, comes from <laughs> Hugh is Banana Gaming, and they ask, is there new engine swaps in the game? There is. This is a great question. Um, They've all been great questions, so haven't they? They have been great questions. Aww, well, done. well done. Well done. Well done, community. It's like you knew the, thing. <laughs> it's like you knew the things that we forgot yeah, to say during the actual show. Yeah, you great. <laughs> um, yes, a really important piece that I wanted to mention is that... Uh, we are adding over 500 brand new uh, engine swaps to the game. So uh, where it makes sense, you'll get uh, potentially like a, a V10 Asian car on an Asian car that you're driving, which is really cool. Uh, so I know a lot of people said, 
when I upgrade my car, it's kind of like a pyramid. Everything ends up sounding like the same V12. That is uh, hopefully not, no longer going to be the case. There's going to be so much variety. And uh, hopefully, I can't wait for everyone to jump in and explore and see what we have to, to upgrade. I feel like your mentions are going to be bombarded with people going, look at this mixtape that I put <laughs> together of this car. Do you like it? That's going to be your whole is just like approving other people's creations. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, there you go go do that um so those are the questions we all have time for today but before we go i want to see if we have any more information about any upcoming shows for people to get excited about absolutely so in a couple of weeks we're going to be taking a dive into the world of mexico mm -hmm. uh we'll be starting to look at each each of the biomes in detail and mm -hmm. having a and seeing what each one of those brings to the game uh looking a bit further into the future we'll start to do a real deep dive into the car list the but, cars. Um, yeah Very obviously good. you've seen a bunch of cars today but we'll mm -hmm. we'll start to go through the full car list in a future stream. Wonderful. That sounds perfect. Mike and Frasier, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. The game, I confirm, does both look and sound amazing. And thank you, everyone else at home, for tuning in today. November 9th will be here before you know it. I promise, just wait a little bit longer. In the meantime, stay tuned to the Forza channels for Forza Horizon 5 news and updates on future Forza Horizon 5. Let's go live streams coming away. Should we say adios together, everyone? Yeah. Okay, uh, one, two, three. Adios! adios. <laughs>